Everybody freeze! <gasps> this is a robbery! This is an example of the popular image of a bank robbery. Several robbers holding everyone at gunpoint. It's been pounded into the American psyche by everything from legends of the Old West, through stories about John Dillinger and Bonnie and Clyde, to TV police shows. Sick and tired of doing the same shit every time. Wanna try a new position, maybe 50 to 69. Don't want a doctor telling me that I'm insane, man. I wanna rob a bank. Whether you're drowning in debt, think you're smarter than the police, or just want the thrill of risking the best years of your life behind bars, here's our guide on how to rob a bank. In Minecraft, the first step is picking a bank. Most bank robbers tend to pick a bank a long way from where they live to throw off the heat. The problem, however, is that these geniuses tend to then start working their way to banks closer to home, meaning the police simply just have to whip out a map and draw a big red arrow to where the robber lives. It's much better to rob banks in entirely random locations, different banks in different places in no particular order. It's not exactly convenient, but neither is going to prison. When looking at a bank, it pays to be as observant as you can. Where are the cameras? How many people are on the floor? How far away is the nearest police station? What kind of doors do they have? When's the busiest time of day? All of these could make a huge difference when you're planning the most stressful few minutes of your life. If you're looking for a response time, maybe pay a few kids to throw a brick through a window and see just how long it takes for the fuzz to show up. If you're well connected, you might even be able to score yourself a police scanner, which will let you know when the cops are already tied up on another job. For your own sake, it's best not to get emotionally attached to any particular bank. If a bank has guards or airlock style doors, you might consider looking elsewhere. The last thing you want is a hero risking his life for $14 an hour, or to be trapped with a fistful of cash on the way out of the bank. If a bank looks too tricky, you're under no obligation to attempt a robbery. In terms of what to wear, you want to strike a balance between being anonymous and being inconspicuous. Glasses and a hat will go a long way to hide your identity without making you stand out in a crowd, but you might want to go one step further. Thanks to COVID-19, it isn't all that strange to see people wearing medical masks out in public, meaning 90% of your face can be covered without people giving you a second look. Another option is to use a motorcycle helmet, as not only does it cover your face, but full protective gear will also cover your entire body. Scary looking theatrical masks aren't exactly a good idea, but we'll get into that later. Whatever you do, make sure to wear gloves to avoid leaving fingerprints and cover up any tattoos, birthmarks, or distinctive features. To take it one step further still, you might even think about tanning or bleaching any exposed skin. What, what happened when they arrested you? Or using temporary tattoos to throw off any suspicion. Modern security cameras look a lot better than what's shown on the news, so keeping your identity hidden is your number one priority. Next up, we'll need to talk equipment, and this is where we'll be going over strategy. A lot of people might have the idea to go in loud with a gun drawn, force open a safe, and speed off with a few duffel bags full of cash. The truth, however, is that it doesn't need to be that complicated. 85% of bank robberies never make it past the bank teller, which is for a good reason. When robbing a bank, you want to be in and out in around 90 seconds, and trying to open safes or sorting through who has access to certain areas usually takes much longer. You don't need any thermite, safe cracking gear, or bottles of bleach to wipe away any evidence. And going for vaults just complicates a plan that doesn't have to be any harder than it needs to be. In all honesty, even bringing a gun is as pointless as it is stupid. Is that true? You, you, you didn't bring a gun? I didn't think I'd need one. Not only does this escalate the situation more than needed, but it also bumps the crime to armed robbery, which can more than double your prison time when you get caught. Along with this, weapons of this kind make bank robberies much easier to track, so it's better to go in unarmed. There's an old saying that the pen is mightier than the sword, and there's no better evidence than a bank robbery, but we'll get to that later. The last thing you'll need is a place to put your money. A simple backpack will work just fine, as you probably won't need to worry about running out of room 
boom. The average bank robbery in the United States will usually only net around $4,000, so a regular backpack can fit that quite comfortably. With all of this ready and your bank picked out and cased, we now get to game day. Looking at statistics, we can see that most bank robberies are attempted on a Friday, but there are no specific days of the week that are more successful than others. On the other hand, although most robbers tend to hit banks in the afternoon, you're much more likely to steal more money if you make your move in the morning. You'll also want to be mindful of the weather and how it might affect your chances of success. Cold and stormy weather, for example, will lead to less people wanting to be outside, meaning less people paying attention to someone trying to be inconspicuous. Cold weather also means that thick layers of clothing won't be as suspicious, as wearing a giant hood in the middle of summer might raise some eyebrows. Before going into the bank, you'll also want to be mindful of foot traffic. If the bank is nearly empty, it might be a good time to make a move. On the other hand, if you see a bunch of muscled up guys eating a family pack of crayons, they're probably United States Marines, and you should hold off until they apply for their 28% interest car loan. At this stage, you've cased the bank, waited for the perfect time under the perfect conditions, and gathered every every piece of equipment you need. All that's left before you enter is to learn about today's sponsor. If you're a regular on our channel, you're probably a typical news enjoyer who likes to know what's happening in the world. But doing so probably isn't as easy as you'd like. News organizations aren't always trustworthy. Social media platforms are a breeding ground for misinformation, and most algorithms are designed to feed users what they want to hear. This is what makes Ground News so special. Ground News is a platform created by a former NASA engineer to give readers a better way to consume the news. For every story, Ground News will compile a list of articles from a wide range of outlets and rate them based on bias and reliability. In our example, we couldn't help but look at this story of how the director of the Miss Nicaragua competition got caught up in a plot to overthrow the government. From 20 articles, we can see that the story was mostly covered by centrist sources. However, the bias insights show what left-leaning articles decided to focus on, compared to ones that skew more to the right. Ground News also makes it super easy to quickly see the factuality rating of each source, its political leaning, and even who owns the publication. Not only does Ground News show you these ratings at the individual level, but it does so for the full story. The good news is that by using the link in the description, viewers can get the pro plan for as little as a dollar a month. However, Ground News is currently running a 40% off deal for their top tier Vantage plan. This includes being able to monitor your news diet in real time and complete a quiz to determine your own level of bias. We can only deliver news one day of every month. So in the meantime, Ground News really is the place to be. Now, back to the video. When entering the bank, the game plan is to be as natural as possible. Until you start demanding money, no crime has been committed, and you're free to simply walk out and leave if you see anything you don't like. I've never robbed anybody in my life. Please don't make this a bad experience for me. Cutting your losses might be the best decision you ever make, so don't be afraid to bail out at a second's notice. As we mentioned before, the pen is mightier than the sword, so the best way to get yourself paid is to hand the bank teller clear and basic instructions for what you want, and patient wait until they've handed you the money. Remember, the robbery will likely stay quiet, unnoticed, and safe if the robber's objective of one witness and one victim is achieved. Threatening customers, getting them to put their hands up, or lying them on the floor tends to attract a lot of attention, and all it takes is someone peering through a window to know that something isn't right. Not only this, but people tend to respond to fear in many different ways, and if a bank teller cracks or breaks down under pressure, you're probably not getting out on your 90 second timeline. Another advantage to the quiet method is that if done correctly, neither the customers or even the other employees will even know that the bank is being robbed, which is the best possible outcome you can hope for. What you're likely to steal is less than a rounding error for most banks, which is why bank tellers are trained to simply comply with your demands and let you leave without a fuss. All employees should do exactly as they are told. Treat the lone bandit as they would any other customer, and do not draw attention to the situation. This is why, even if a bank has a silent alarm, employees are only instructed to use them once the robber has already left. After all, even a few thousand dollars is a lot cheaper than a potential hostage situation. With all of this in mind, prospective bank robbers will want to look out for die packs, explosive devices which will be hidden in wads of cash that'll explode around 10 seconds after leaving the bank. This is why you'll either want to ask for loose currency or you'll want to check the stacks themselves before leaving the bank. Modern die packs can be indistinguishable from a regular stack of money, and they're used in roughly 75% of banks across the US, meaning these things 
savings will be one of your top concerns. Die packs will not only make the cash itself lose all of its value, but it will also stain both your clothing and skin. And this shit doesn't come off in the shower. There's also the problem of marked bills, but we'll get to that problem later. However, if no one has been alerted and you've walked out of the bank without causing a fuss, your next step is to get out of there before the police arrive. As previously mentioned, one of the bank's employees has likely already hit the silent alarm, meaning you've only got a few minutes before the police are at the scene. If you're smart, you've probably already got a getaway route planned out, as well as a backup in case roadworks throw your plans out the window. A more important aspect to consider is a getaway vehicle. Under no fucking circumstances should you use your own car, or a car from someone you know. Before you even think about it, using a rental car is also off limits, as you would either have to put down your name or give in your bank account details, maybe even details from the bank you just robbed. Using a stolen car is obviously a much better idea. But once it's been reported stolen, you're likely to get flagged by the police on your way to your safe house. A much better idea is to find a vehicle of the same make and model of your own and steal their license plates. After the job is over, simply ditch the plates and you're nothing more than a guy who happens to have the same car as the local bank robber. As for the getaway itself, you'll also want to avoid speeding or running red lights to make a fast escape. In fact, the best thing you can do is drive the speed limit. Roll the windows down and start jamming out to some Katy Perry while you drive into the sunset. The police will be looking for someone who is trying to be as inconspicuous as possible. They won't even bother with a dude singing an off-key version of California Girls. Another tried and tested getaway method is a regular bicycle. Not only can these be deceptively fast and use routes that are hard for police to follow, but once again, if the bank tellers don't see you right away, they're not going to be looking for a guy who's just out getting some exercise. Whatever transport method you choose, just keep in mind that as soon as you're busted, the game is already up meaning you're much better to choose something inconspicuous and common than fast and flashy. You should also completely service the vehicle before the big day, as not being able to start the engine will leave you dead in the water. Even a flat tire or broken brake light will be cause enough to pull you over, which isn't exactly what you want when you have a backpack full of freshly stolen cash. At this stage, you've made your escape. The police are none the wiser and you've made yourself a few thousand dollars richer. But the job isn't over. The next step is to make sure you get away with it. Get yourself a solid alibi. Get your story straight and think of every possible thing the police might ask to poke holes in your cover. You should also double check the cash and be meticulous. No unexploded die packs, no trackers, and no funny business. The cash might still be marked, so you'll want to offload it as quickly as you can. Buy a secondhand car from Facebook Marketplace and then immediately sell it to get rid of the cash. If the bills were marked, it's not your problem anymore. From here, a few thousand dollars might not raise any eyebrows from the tax man, but if you're going to be doing this on the regular, you'll want a way to wash the money. This is as simple as making yourself a cash-heavy business, then just cooking the books. Car washers, ice cream trucks, or hot dog stands work well for this kind of thing. Pizza Papa always gets paid. You don't even need to be profitable. You just need to cook the books and make sure you pay tax on the money you stole. As a bonus, you also get unlimited tax-deductible ice cream. What's not to like? As much as it sucks, it's the best thing you can do to keep the money safe and sound, as any big purchases will start to raise some eyebrows. You might be thinking that getting a partner in crime might make this whole process easier, as after all, you both have different skill sets. A tailor can create custom-made disguises, a mechanic can prevent any vehicle mishaps, and a business owner can wash the money without much trouble. As good as this sounds, however, you'll probably want to be doing this gig alone. What happens to the rest of the guys? Unless you're a part of a team of professionals who can get into vaults and flip metal without making a sound, bringing in extra people is just one more loose end leading you to a prison sentence. If they get caught, they have every incentive in the world to sell you out. And that's not even considering that you'll only be taking home a portion of the money. As exciting as the prospect might be, the hard truth is that robbing a bank isn't worth the effort. Modern technology makes robbing a bank harder than ever, and the risks involved aren't worth a fraction of the reward. In the 1960s, a typical bank robbery could net a criminal the equivalent of around $38,000. But today, it's only a little over $4,000. This means that by the time you travel to a random bank to avoid suspicion, buy your equipment, plan your getaway strategy, and wash the cash, you could have just gotten an 
average paying job and probably come out with just as much money. On top of this, most bank robbers are caught after just three robberies, which means not only are you likely to spend 10 years in prison, but you'll also have to pay the money back. Robbing a bank is also a federal crime, meaning harsher sentencing, and banks themselves tend to have fast police response times, meaning you're probably better off stealing from literally anywhere else. The cold hard truth is that robbing banks is just a terrible way to make money. As cliche as it sounds, the best way to make money through a bank is to get an MBA, put in an application, and work your way up the corporate ladder. By the time you've hit upper management, your salary is higher than most criminals would ever dream of earning. When bank robbers fuck up, they go to prison. But when banks fuck up, they get bailed out by the taxpayer. So if you're looking for a low-risk, high-reward way to make your millions, when you step into that bank, don't ask for their money, ask for a job. If this video helped you rob a bank, or if you have any fun tips to share with up-and-coming bank robbers, feel free to share your experience down below. I've been Cody from the Swag News Team, and on behalf of all of us, have a fucking good one. Awesome. That I can break into your house Why you working? I'm just lurking through your bedroom like a mouse Getting naked on your sofa Wearing just your penny loafers Take some pictures, leave them by your dirty dishes And back your rover down the driveway Drive it down the highway Fly the motherfucker off a bridge I'm Buy some drugs, sell some drugs Buy a gun just because I don't want anyone to think that I'm a bitch A